Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are doing something very, very different. We're doing a commission. These are 20 models painted or to be painted as Black Templar. They have a bunch of banners and other things and gizmos attached to them. But these are firstborn marines and they are the first time I have painted regular space marines on this channel. Now, <coughs> one of the first things I have to do is actually remove the bases. They have to be replaced with 32 millimeter ones. And so I basically first start off by removing their bases, clipping them off, and then I use a Dremel drill tool to finely sand the bottom so that it's flat on their feet. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Rakarth Flesh, we're going to paint the banners first. I'm going to be using airbrushing for this mostly, so I want to do these first. So we're going to do with a base layer of Steel Legion Drab. Now, I am a bit rusty with my airbrushing, so I screw it up. The air pressure is too high, so it blurts everything out too much. And so I move on to Bane Blade Brown at like a 30 to 45 degree-ish angle, but the pressure is so much that it kind of just completely wipes out the Steel Legion trap. And then I move on to the Rakarth Flesh at a very high angle, and it doesn't work too well. Uh, I basically if should have had it at lower pressure and then focus on the high angles and then uh, spray the Rakarth Flesh onto the large wide areas. But that was a fail, and the depth doesn't show at all. So we go back to try to add some depth. I mix some Agrax Earthshade with Lamian Medium 1 to 1, and then I just apply it to the top parts and stuff. I should have applied it to the whole banner to make it uh, more balanced. And once that was done, I then took Bane Blade Brown and dry brushed it onto the upper folds, and so like you would still have the depth, but it would be blotted out all the excess. But that wasn't good enough, so I took uh, Rakarth Flesh again, and then I lightly airbrushed it at an angle to try to smooth things out and uh, it was okay. Now with Lead Belcha, Black Templar's Contrast, and Lamian Medium, I'm going to paint the metal armor. Now I have painted these models, uh, Black Templar colors, before a long time ago with the Indominus box set, uh, but I used a different setup for paint because I didn't have Black Templar's Contrast, so I wanted to try the contrast this time. So I start off with a base layer of Lead Belcha all over the bodies. I uh, also removed all the banners on there because I figured it would accidentally splash onto them and ruin the work, so I removed all the banners as well. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Lamian Medium, and a little bit of water to make it flow better, I then applied it all over the model. Now interestingly, Black Templar Contrast when diluted with Lamian Medium comes out blue. Black Templar Contrast is a very dark blue hue in it. And once that was done, I went back with Lead Belcha and dry brushed on the upper areas, the edges and stuff to try to pick out the details, like I did before when I painted the Primaris. Now with Lead Belcha, Nuln Oil, and Iron Breaker, what we're going to do is we're going to paint, we're going to try to fix things. With the Lead Belcher, I'm going to go back and paint the parts of the backpack, certain metal pieces, chains, uh, the models are all different, like gun barrels, stuff like that, pieces of the bolters or heavy weapons. And then once that's done, I'm going to take Iron Breaker, which is the only good silver I have, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to apply it on to basically use it as a highlight the only good highlight I have it seems that's metal and make it shiny and bright and once that's done I'm going to take Nuln Oil mix it with Lamian Medium I didn't show it but to a one-to-one -one mix and then I'm going to apply it all over the armor and it works pretty well. Nuln oil when diluted turns out to be a brown, interestingly enough. Alright, with Waz Daka Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to paint the guns and the eyes. We're going to start off with a layer of Waz Daka Red on the uh, casings of the weapons. Uh, for the rocket launchers, this is a bit random. For the melters, it's pretty obvious. For some of the bolters, I mean, there's just these flat planes or panels on the weapons. And, of course, the eyes. And once that's done, we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to apply it 
uh, into the eyes. Uh, the Wazdaka Red will be underneath and we just want to cover like 90-95% of it as best we can with Evil Sun Scarlet or cover the whole thing 100% of the eye and Wazdaka is just a foundation. And we also use the Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight uh, the weapons by basically covering 80-90% to 90 of them, the upper half of the panels. And once that is done, we will take Troll Slayer Orange and apply a single dot of it, uh, a little bit of a wide dot up and down into each of the eyes. As well as there are some uh, scoped weapons, we're going to apply that as well, and such and such. And now with Uthwarn Grey and Pallid Witchlish, we're going to do the white shoulder pads. Now Uthwarn Grey is a very strong pigmented color and it can cover black easy. So I use this as a base layer onto all the uh, shoulder pads. And then I take the weaker Pallid Witch Flesh, which is closer to a white, and then I just apply it all over the shoulder pads. Easy. And now with Xandry Dust, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and I actually do not use a Karak Stone, and I use a little bit of Lamian Medium to help. With Xandry Dust, so one thing the uh, person wanted was that the banners and the scrolls be fundamentally different. Uh, so I gave them different tones. Xandry Dust will be on all the uh, purity seals and such and such that are scattered throughout. It's on the banners, it's on their legs, and they have some extra ones on them. And once that's done, I'll take a one-to-one -one mix of Skeleton Horde and uh, Lamian Medium, and I'll apply it all over the Purity Seals. And I do that around two times. Then I take Xandry Dust, water down a bit so it uh, <coughs> it's a little transparent, and then I basically highlight the edges of all the Purity Seals and some of the wide centers. Uh, this creates more of a very deep contrasting. Uh, like you'll notice them. It's not smooth transition, it's more deeper contrast. So live and learn. And now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint the Purity Seal Wax. We're going to start off with a base layer of Corn Red all on the inside and on the edges. Then we will take Mephiston Red and we will apply it all over the edges and like a pretty much big dot in the center, but we don't want to cover all the Corn Red. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, we're just going to paint the upper 60% crescent of the circle of the wax, and like a single dot in the center. And with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, Baneblade Brown, and Rackcarth Flesh, we're going to paint these loincloths that uh, two of the guys have with the multi -meltas. We're going to paint Steel Legion Drab. We're basically doing this without the airbrush. Steel Legion Drab first, then a layer of Agrax Urshade on top to add the depth. Then we're going with Steel Legion Drab, and we're going to cover like 80-90% to 90 of this. Now there's some deep folds in there, and I decided against uh, painting them all and obscuring most of the Agrax Urshade. That was a mistake. I should have painted 90-95% to 95 of this again with the Steel Legion Drab. Then I go to Bane Blade Brown, make sure it's watered down, and then I basically covered 60-70% uh, to 70 of the uh, glowing cloths in this. Basically the edges and most of the open planes use draw straight lines and feathering techniques to make sure it blends better. And then Rackarth Flesh for the very edges of each of the folds. And I'm going to try to add some flavor into this to fix this kind of a mess. Iron Breaker, just to fix uh, pieces of metal that may have been obscured by now. Gnome Oil, Skeleton Horde, and Gullum and Flesh, we're going to add some uh, weathering to it. So the backpacks are, and the gun barrels are going to have Nolan Oil to add the depth. Then we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast, which is a good yellower, and we're going to apply it all over uh, the vents on the backpack and for like the whole or three-fourths of the gun barrels. It depends on which weapon you have. And then finally the last half of the gun barrels, uh, the place where the bullet exits out, the muzzle, and the insides of each of the vents on the backpack will have Golem and Flesh, a dot, right in there. And now with Caliban Green and Wall Flesh, we're just going to do the grenades on their sides. Caliban Green is a base, and then just a simple highlight with Wall Flesh. And the Fragmentation Grenades is just doing dot 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 onto the different cube pieces of it. And we're just going to keep it simple. Mornfang Brown, we're going to paint the uh, bullet ammo pouches on their sides. That's it. 
And then with Brass Scorpion and Liberator Gold, we're going to do the Metallics. With Brass Scorpion as a strong red metal, we're going to apply this on all the eagles, the skulls, and the various like, metal works all throughout the body. And this is my fault, not the camera this time. With Liberator Gold, I didn't get the footage, but basically what I do is I just dry brush slash overbrush onto the chest wings, the different insignias, the skulls on the back, and stuff like that. Uh, very quick and simple, and it looks good. And with Dawnstone, I'm going to paint these... I'm just going to assume they're like glass or something, and I'm just going to use a basic Dawnstone to be their window stuff. I don't know if I show it later, but I basically take a chain mail and I just clean up the lines on these little... And now with Liquitex Modeling Putty, a step I should have done much earlier looking back, I basically apply it to all their bases. These are 32mm bases as per the client's request, and my god, they better be the right size bases. I'm not <coughs> redoing them because I destroyed the old ones anyway. So I basically apply a thin layer of Liquitex. I was planning on applying a thicker layer, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. And then once uh, it, but they weren't fully dry, but they were getting there, I then applied sand all over and let it squish. And then I let it dry it over and then I aligned them in uh, rows. And then I had them press the feet of each correct Marine onto his own base which kind of was a waste in the end. This was a pointless step because uh, uh, which one? the putty layer was too thin, so it didn't matter, except for a few bases where I had too much putty on it, but whatever, I should have done this a long time ago, and I had to wait for them to dry overnight. And now with XV88 and Agrox Earthshade, I paint the bases. Now one step that I forgot to show is I took a bunch of uh, Liquitex matte varnish, which isn't really matte, it's terrible, and I just applied it all over the bases so that the sand would stick after all, because the putty itself is not going to hold on to them that well. And, but once that dried, I then applied XV88 all over. Once that dried, I then applied Agrax Earthshade. I let it dry naturally instead of with a hair dryer because that really would ruin it. And then I dry brushed XV88 all over the pieces again, and it looked good. And one thing I did uh, later after the fact that I didn't show on camera is I took some Agrax Earthshade and I just like drew lines with the wash onto the bases to make it look like there were some places that had more depth than others. And apparently I was dumb enough to agree to actually also do the decals, which was the dumbest idea ever because this was the longest and most arduous step, because each model required four decals each, and there's texture on them which makes it very hard for it to adhere, and the shoulder pads on the right side many of the times had like the tactical symbol in it, like pre-made shoulder pads with the tactical symbol in there, so it was very hard for it to adhere, as well as the flags and the texture made it so that some of these decals would not get on. And so I applied it slowly and laboriously to make the Black Templar things uh, wrap correctly around the uh, weirdly shaped shoulder pads, like they're not flat. I had to cut them into as round as possible so there wouldn't be extra flash and then I applied them on and it took a very long time to apply each one because you had to make sure it's aligned properly. If it's not, you have to take it off using a lot of water and a brush. Well, and then once the Black Templar ones dried, uh, it wasn't ready yet so I took a razor knife and I like did slashes along the open parts so that the uh, decal would be cut and so they allow it to fold over itself. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I then applied this onto the decals to make them look, to blend in better and to also seal them in. Now, interestingly enough, I had to use on the shoulder pads three times that I put three layers of this in total in the end. And I also did around two onto the banners because there were decals on the banners. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh and Abaddon Black, I then use this to fix the shoulder pads because there were some places where when I use the knife to cut and make the decals fold on themselves, uh, the pallid witch flesh underneath was cut up so I used that to fill that and some of the decals ripped and tore and so I used the Abaddon Black to fill that up and then of course I apply another layer of uh, ag uh, what was it? AK Interactive Ultra Matte to make it all look similar. And so this was me fixing it. And now. Skipping ahead for a bit, this is me doing a final assembly of gluing them with super glue to their bases and their flags onto the top. 
Uh, the decals on the top as well, uh, they wanted a very specific unit marker designation, and that took a very long time. And I skipped one or two small steps, and uh, here we are done. Uh, the only things were skipped is like I had to go through each individual model just to make sure everything was fine, and of course, applying Mornfing Brown to all the bases to edge them out. Uh, but apart from that, so an interesting thing with this uh, commission, uh, I don't like commissions, and this reminded me why. <laughs> so the thing is, they came fully assembled, uh, mostly fully assembled, somewhere a little broken, and. Uh, I had some distinct orders for it, uh, so the thing is that they came pre-built, uh, pre which I thought was good, and pre-varnished, and they had a texture applied to them. Now the texture actually caused me a lot of trouble, because the texture was unevenly applied, and there's some parts like on the guns and stuff, it obscures the detail, and so if I was to rate this as my own work, I would give it a 3 or at best a 4 out of 10 in work in comparison to all my other work. I would be ashamed to have painted this, uh, but for me it was mostly me trying to make the most out of what I had. So it's the texture as far as it that also on the models, it's randomly. In some places it's missing, in some places it's there. Like uh, the two marines with the Multimelta, their faces are bare. And part of their face looks like it's like, like I don't know, like growths are growing out of it, so it obscures a lot of the detail, and on their guns it also obscures their detail, and worst of all, on the banners, there is the, uh, this uh, thing, what was it, this texture as well, which looks like finely, uh, grain sand that has been glued onto it, like in a gluish paste, and what this does is it doesn't allow for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the decals to very well adhere to the banners. I actually don't know if these things will just fall off if you touch them. I sealed all the uh, decals on the banners uh, two to three times with uh, the AK Interactive. In and out, it's been solidified in there, but you can still see sort of underneath it because the texture keeps it from being perfectly flush. A lot of the paint uh, job is very, like, bad in texture because the texture which is randomly applied it seems in some areas makes some place look very grainy like a low quality image you might find and so it is not polite to disparage the client's work but i could not do my best work with this uh, texturing it really was a bit difficult for me and so i consider this as me trying to make the most of a bad situation i was put into if by the time I realized how badly the uh, texture was in affecting it, uh, I was too late to go back. I spent too many hours already. Uh, going forward, if future models have the texture, I'm going to try to find a way if I can remove it. Now, I have done textured armored before. I painted a Primaris Assault Squad from Indominus, and I used texture on the models, but I used a putty where after I placed it, I immediately took my thumbs when it dried, and then I dr uh, sanded it with my own fingers to smooth that out and make sure all the details were not obscured. I made sure to it, that it was only on the ceramatite, and I took a knife, and then I dug out anything that went into, like, the folds or the recesses or anything like that. So... This project was on, it took a lot longer, like the video, like there's not that much steps to it, but there's 20 models. And I will actually give you a time estimate, it took me around 8 hours just to do the decals themselves. So 20 models, 4 decals each, whew, that's 80 decals. Alright, so I am going to take a break from this commission because it's not over, and I hope to make it up to the guy later with much better models. He has some dreadnoughts and a land raider, and I think I'm going to overcompensate on those but I'm actually going the next project is another squad of 20 yeah I am I am barely putting out videos but that's one of the keys about the uh, the joy of painting is to be happy with your hobby and take your time I will not be rushed YouTube algorithms be damned I will not put out two videos a week that'll be a miracle I've done it before but that's because of like it was single models and I was at a very free week but the next video will be out when it's out. I'm facing my demons. I'm going back to those accursed Lumineth Realm Lords. <coughs> Alright, so like the video if you like the video. Share if you want to share it. Comment on anything you want to comment. And uh, I'll see you whenever I get 20 of those blasted elves done. Bye.